Evaluate with the line integral along the curve C of f dot dr, given the three-dimensional vector field f, and C is a line segment joining the two given points. If the given vector field is conservative, we can use the potential function in the two endpoints to evaluate the line integral. We begin by determining if the given vector field is conservative. Because we have a three-dimensional vector field, if we let the components be p, q, and r, the vector field is conservative if and only if the partial of q with respect to x equals a partial p with respect to y, and the partial r with respect to x equals a partial p with respect to z, and the partial of r with respect to y equals the partial of q with respect to z. To be consistent with our notes, looking at the given vector field, notice p is equal to 5yz cosine xyz, q equals 5xz cosine xyz, and r equals 5xy cosine xyz. And now let's determine the partial of q with respect to x and the partial of p with respect to y. I've already worked some of this out to save some time. To determine the partial of q with respect to x, we differentiate 5xz cosine xyz with respect to x, treating y and z as constants. To find the partial derivative, we need to apply the product rule and the chain rule. Applying the product rule, we have the first function of 5xz and then times the derivative of the second function with respect to x, which is the derivative of cosine xyz with respect to x, which is negative sine xyz times the derivative of xyz with respect to x, treating y and z as constants, which gives us times yz. Then we have plus the second function of cosine xyz times the derivative of the first function with respect to x, which is the derivative of 5xz with respect to x, which is 5z. Simplifying, we have negative 5xyz squared sine xyz plus 5z cosine xyz. And now we need to find the partial p with respect to y by differentiating 5yz cosine xyz with respect to y, treating x and z as constants. This gives us 5yz times negative sine xyz times xz. Again, this is the first function times the derivative of the second function with respect to y, treating x and z as constants. Then we have plus cosine xyz times 5z, which is a second function times the derivative of the first function with respect to y, treating x and z as constants. Simplifying, notice the two partial derivatives are equal. We now know the partial of q with respect to x equals the partial of p with respect to y. We still need to make sure the partial r with respect to x equals the partial of p with respect to z, and the partial of r with respect to y equals the partial of q with respect to z. And again, I've already worked this out to save some time. You may want to pause the video and verify this. We will find that the partial of r with respect to x equals the partial of p with respect to z, and the partial of r with respect to y equals the partial of q with respect to z. We now know the given vector field is conservative. So because the vector field is conservative, we now want to find the function f of x comma y comma z, the potential function, such that the vector field f equals the gradient of the function f. This means p equals the partial of f with respect to x, q equals the partial of f with respect to y, and r equals the partial of f with respect to z. And therefore we can reconstruct the potential function f of x comma y comma z by integrating p, q, and r which again are the first order partials of the potential function. We integrate p with respect to x, q with respect to y, and r with respect to z. Looking at the first integral with respect to x, we integrate with respect to x treating y and z as constants. This is going to require u substitution where u is equal to x, y, z. Notice the u is equal to the partial derivative of x, y, z with respect to x times dx. Performing the substitution, we now have the integral of five cosine u du, which is equal to five sine u plus c, but in our case, it's really five times sine of x, y, z, not plus a constant, but plus a function of y and z. We have plus a function of y and z here because when integrating with respect to x, we only recover the x part. We could be missing the y and z parts. Next, we integrate with respect to y, treating x and z as constants, which once again requires u substitution, where u is x, y, z, but du is equal to 
the partial of x, y is g with respect to y, treating x and z as constants, and therefore du equals x, z, dy. With respect to u, we have the integral of five cosine u du, which once again is equal to five sine u plus c, or in our case, five sine of x, y, z plus a function of x and z. And finally, we integrate five x, y cosine x, y, z with respect to z in a similar fashion. Performing u substitution, writing it back in terms of x, y, z, we have five sine x, y, z plus a function of x and y. And now we compare the three antiderivatives to reconstruct the potential function. In this case, though, notice all three antiderivatives have the same term in common, and therefore the potential function is simply f of x comma y comma z equals five sine x, y, z plus a constant c. And now we can use the potential function to evaluate the original line integral. The line integral along the curve c of f dot dr is equal to the potential function evaluated at the end point minus the potential function evaluated at the beginning point. Now we evaluate the function values. f of five comma one fifth comma pi divided by six equals five sine of the product of five one fifth and pi divided by six. And f of six comma pi divided by two comma one sixth is equal to five sine of the product of six pi divided by two and one sixth. Simplifying, we have five sine of pi divided by six minus five sine pi divided by two. Sine pi divided by six is one half. Sine pi divided by two is one. Simplifying, we have five halves minus five, which equals negative five halves. I hope you found this helpful.